أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين So inshallah in this lesson we want to speak more about the theory of language with which Allah Matabatabai approaches the tafsir of the Holy Quran And although Allah Matabatabai tries to stay away from imposing an intellectual framework on the Holy Quran a level of presupposition is needed in any exercise of interpretation. And so Allah Matabatabai tries to lay out his theory of language in a coherent fashion and doesn't seek to impose that on the Holy Quran, but just seeks to clarify that this is the perspective through which he understands language when it pertains to the scriptural sources. So as we mentioned last time, Allah Matabatabai explains that the Holy Quran is very clear in its language. However, what has confused interpreters are not the concepts that are indicated by the words of the Holy Quran, but rather it is the reference, meaning the objects that are referred to by those concepts according to the level of existence within the context of the verse. We're going to be getting philosophical, so I'm going to need your full attention. The function of language between human beings is so that we can indicate towards something in conversation without having to actually bring that thing in front of the eyes of the person we're speaking to. So for example, you can refer to a specific mug or cup. And because the person who you're speaking to shares the concept with you of what that favorite mug is, they will be easily able to take their mind to the concept. So for example, if you say, somebody broke my favorite mug, the function of language is to take the listener to the concept of somebody breaking your favorite mug without you bringing somebody in front of them to smash the mug in front of their eyes. That is the function of language. We use language out of convenience. But because of our day-to-day -day use of language and our constant occupation in the mundane and the fact that language is especially useful in carrying out our material and mundane matters, as soon as we hear something, our minds immediately race to the material reference of words that we hear. So for example, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيد Or, وَمَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ Or, إِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ Then when we hear these expressions, our minds immediately move towards a spatial movement. And we consider what is with Allah to be spatially separate from where we are. However, Allah Matabatabai opines that language is designated for purposes or designated for the spirit of the meaning rather than for specific reference. So for example, if you take the word lamp, not too long ago, a lamp was constructed of a candle and a wick and you would have to light it with some kind of fire in order to illuminate your nighttime. But today when we think of a lamp, none of those original parts of the lamps used in medieval times for example are used in a modern lamp which works on electricity and a light bulb and perhaps has a lampshade and so on. And the same thing if we take a scale. A medieval scale was made out of two pans and something to balance those pans. Whereas nowadays with electronic scales, what is involved in making a scale is completely different. And the same thing for a weapon. In the times of the cavemen, a weapon was a rock tied onto a stick and then, as human beings developed, it became swords and bows and arrows and spears. Then it became guns and cannonballs. And now weapons can be dropped out of the sky and remotely controlled by drones. But in each of these three examples, the lamp, the scale and the weapon, there is a spirit to all of their meanings. The lamp is something with which you light up the night time. The scale is that with which you balance, or is the benchmark by which you judge. And the weapon is that thing with which you defend yourself, or attack somebody else. And so, words themselves are designated for their purposes, or designated for the spirit of their meaning, rather than for any specific referent. And from here as well you can see why Allah Matabatabai called his tafsir Al-Mizan fi tafsir al-Qur'an, the scale in the interpretation of the Qur'an because he sought to provide the benchmark when it came to interpretation, rejecting the interpretation of many of the interpreters before him and setting down a new methodology in interpreting the Holy Qur'an. So it is from here that Allah Matabatabai criticizes the Ahl al-Hadith. As we explained in the previous session, Allah Matabatabai criticizes the approach of the Ahl al-Hadith when they talk about the apparent meaning of the Holy Qur'an. When they say for example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a hand, an actual physical hand, or he sits on a throne. 
because the Holy Quran has said that he has a hand and has said that he sits on a throne. Allah Matabatabai criticizes them to say that this is not the apparent meaning of the Holy Quran, but rather these are the reference that the mind may immediately move towards because of its occupation with the material world. It is because when we talk about hands we are used to the human hand, and when we talk about kings we are used to them sitting on thrones, perhaps made out of gold and jewels and so on. So when the Ahlul Hadith say that they stick to the apparent meaning, it is not the apparent meaning, but it is the designation of certain reference that they are used to because of their existence in the material plane. And Allah Matabatabai believes that this completely confuses the meanings of the Holy Quran. Rather what a person should do is that they should investigate the plane with which the verse of the Holy Quran is concerned with. If the verse of the Holy Quran is speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and about him having a hand or a face or sitting on a throne, then these verses shouldn't be interpreted in the same way as human beings having hands and faces and sitting on thrones. And that is because the Holy Quran itself has expressed the transience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over any kind of material existence. And thereafter, Allah Matabatabai elucidates his method in the clearest of terms. He aims to explain the Holy Quran by the Holy Quran, explaining the meaning of the verses by examining the other verses that are relevant to that verse, not cherry picking certain verses and ignoring others. And then, through the reflection that the Holy Quran itself encourages, Allah Matabatabai hopes to explain what those verses mean, using perhaps some introductory concepts but no concept that would rely on a theoretical framework which would be far removed from what a normal person would naturally be able to accept. And then he seeks to clarify what the reference of the verses are by considering the verses themselves and the planes with which they're concerned with, as he is very concerned that the Holy Quran should explain itself. And so by using other verses of the Holy Quran, part of the Quran is speaking for another part of the Quran. And then Allah Matabatabai continues by saying that this is what he believes to have been the method of tafsir of the Holy Prophet and his family, as they encouraged towards thinking about the ayat of the Holy Quran, explained that it had a number of levels and that its outward was delicate and its inward was deep. And so aside for the grammatical or linguistic introductory points, or something that would be self-evident, Allah Matabatabai separates any philosophical discourse or sociological discourse from the interpretation of the Holy Quran under a separate title. And this is what is special about his work of tafsir. Finally, before the end of his introduction, he specifies seven categories of topics that the Holy Quran deals with. The first are the concepts that deal with the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his attributes in terms of life, knowledge, power, hearing, seeing, unity, and so on. But as for the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is above human conception. The second category are the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of his creation, his will, his guidance, his justice, his satisfaction, his anger, and so on. The third category are the topics of those things that are between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the human being in terms of the veils, the pen, the throne, the chair, the heavens and the earth, the angels, the devils, the jinn, and so on. The fourth category speaks about the human being before this world. The fifth category talks about the human being in this world in terms of some historical details, sociological issues, prophethood, revelation, law, religion, the stories of the prophets and their stations. The sixth topic is about the human being after this world in terms of the barzakh and the resurrection and the seventh topic is that which is linked to ethics and personality development in terms of the stations of the friends of God, the path of servitude, Islam, faith, sincerity, and so on. As for the verses that talk about the divine law, Allah Matabatabai doesn't investigate them in this tafsir. So that is the theory of language propounded by Allah Matabatabai, as well as the salient points that he covers in his introduction. And inshallah, in the next video, we will start with the opening chapter of the Holy Quran, the Surah Al-Fatiha. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin.